It's November 22nd. Something's haunting us. Oh, holy God, would you look at that? It's October 1985. I'm basking in the two million year old light of Andromeda. I can see the supernova that Ernst Hartwig discovered in 1885, a century ago. It scintillates, a wink intended for the trilobites, all long dead. Supernovas are where gold forms, the only place. All gold comes from supernovas. It's Christmas 1959. Do, do you like it? I like it very much. Its atomic structure is a perfect grid, like a checkerboard. It's... Janie, what's up? Are you cold? I can raise the temperature. No, I'm not cold. I'm scared. Of me? No, yes. Oh, God. Look, I... I'm just scared because everything feels weird. It's as if everything's changed, not just you, everything. I mean, I don't know what you are. Nobody does. They say you can do anything, John. They say you're like God now. I don't think there is a God, Janie. If there is, I'm not him. I'm still the same person. Nothing's changed. I still want you. I'll always want you. As I lie, I hear her shouting at me in 1963, sobbing in 1966. My fingers open. The photograph is falling. It's February 1960, and everything is frozen. I am starting to accept that I shall never feel cold or warm again. Perfect! When we go public next month, every magazine in the world's gonna want these pictures. How do you like your costume? Pretty slick, huh? I don't like it, especially this helmet. What's this symbol stand for? Ah, well, it means, like, atoms, atomic power, like that. It's meaningless. A hydrogen atom would be more appropriate. I don't think I shall be wearing this. The marketing boys say you need a symbol. If I'm to have a symbol, it shall be one I respect. There. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. People will remember it. When they see it, they'll think of Dr. Manhattan. Dr. what? They're shaping me into something gaudy and lethal. It's all getting out of my hands. We repeat, the Superman exists and he's American. According to Pentagon sources, this astonishing individual can control atomic structure itself. There has been no response from the Kremlin as of this time. The superhuman, codenamed Dr. Manhattan, has not spoken to the press. Instead, we ask those costumed vigilantes remaining from the 1940s masked hero fad how they felt. Well, uh, we're pleased, obviously. Very, very pleased. Well, you know, they say he walks through walls and stuff. I'll believe it when I see it. Huh? You knocked them all dead. You've arrived. Have I? Sometimes I feel as if I've been here all the time. I'm there now, in 1960, saying those words, watching that TV set. Now it's June, a charity event with several costumed adventurers attending. Friendly, middle-aged men who like to dress up. I have nothing in common with them. Only the youngest, called Ozymandias seems interesting. It's November. The newspapers call me a crime fighter, so the Pentagon says I must fight crime. In Moloch's underground vice den, the sighs turn to screams of terror. The morality of my activities escapes me. It's September 1961. John Kennedy is shaking my hand, asking what it's like to be a superhero. I tell him he should know, and he nods, laughing. Two years later in Dallas, his head snaps forward and then back. Two shots, 
In May 1962, a masked man retires to open an auto business. His real name is Hollis Mason. We are talking after a civic banquet in his honor. Dallas is still 18 months away. See this? Almost makes me sorry I'm quitting this ridiculous business. Then why have you chosen to retire now? Is it your age? Partly. Partly, I guess it's you. With someone like you around, the whole situation changes. You can do anything. All I got to offer is a good left hook. Nah, I'm better off retiring, writing my autobiography, repairing folks' cars for them. Cars are something I'm happy with. And it'll be a while before even you affect General Motors. Well, the new electric cars should be even simpler. Electric? That's right. They'd have appeared before, but there wasn't enough lithium to mass-produce polyacetylene batteries. Of course, I can synthesize it easily. Anyway, it's been interesting meeting you again. I hope you enjoy your retirement. Y yeah Yeah, I hope so, too. Eighteen months away, an electric limousine is pulling onto Dealey Plaza. So, what you're saying is you knew he'd get shot? John, I... I mean, if you're serious, I mean, why didn't you do something? I can't prevent the future. To me, it's already happening. John, what are you saying? That you know the future? About everything? About us? In 1959, I could hear you shouting here now, in 1963. Soon we make love. Just like that? Like I'm a puppet? Your prediction's way off, mister. No. We make love right after Wally arrives with the earrings I ordered for you. Shut up! You're messing up my mind, John. John, I, I'm scared. Will you hold me, please? It's 1963. An hour into the future, her sweat cools and dries in the November bedroom. It's 1964. I'm informing the Pentagon that I'll no longer be wearing the whole of my costume. It's 1966. I'm in a room of people wearing disguises. A very young girl sits to my right. She looks at me and smiles. In 1985, my hands are encircling her face. What's the matter? You were staring at that girl is the matter. Now pay attention. She's beautiful. After each long kiss, she plants a smaller, gentler one upon my lips, like a signature. In 1966, the masks are still squabbling. Soon the meeting breaks up. Janie's voice is cold, furious. Outside, Janie accuses me of chasing jailbait. She bursts into angry tears, asking if it's because she's getting older. It's true. She's aging more noticeably every day, while I'm standing still. 1966. It's nice of you to come out on patrol with me. My mom taught me everything she knew, but I'm still pretty new to all this. You pig. I, I don't know what I should call you. My name's Lori. Do you have another name apart from Dr. Manhattan? Yes. My name's John. You tell her. You tell her what it's gonna be like when her face wrinkles up and her boobs start sagging and you're still goddamn 30. It's 1959. Janie is handing me the glass. It's 1966 and she's packing, tearful, careless with anger. The photograph lies in the sand at my feet. In 1969, I'm receiving news of my father's death. In 1959, he's opening a telegram from the military informing him of his son's accidental disintegration. I never correct their mistake. Gila Flats closes down in 1970. On Lori's 20th birthday, we move into our new Washington apartment. I've revealed my true name to the public. After father's death, there seems little point in concealing it. In 